find a home to supply a trip back home. I'm grown now, and this is my soul now. DJ and Charlamagne the God. Boy, y'all have come a long way, I think that y'all have a certain amount of respect for, you know, what everybody else does, and y'all are just the best at what y'all do. This platform, the reach y'all have that you've earned, makes space for somebody like me. You guys have a direct line to the culture. Oh my God, I'm on the radio with Angela Charlemagne and DJ Envy. Yes, you are. Hey. All I do is read about the Breakfast Club. Really? Every morning, That's good. you guys are trending. Every, uh, you know, I drag my ass out of bed. I'm like, uh, what happened on the Breakfast Club today? <laughs> All right. Good morning, USA. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought y'all had a drop. Yo, yo, couldn't find a drop. What up, Yeezy? What up, DJ Envy? It's Monday. Back to the work week. Good morning. Yes, I feel like I've been gone forever. Yeah, you were gone this whole weekend, right? I've been out of town since Tuesday. So where you been at? Uh well, Tesday I was at the National Association of Broadcasters. You know, they had their heroes event where they were giving out awards to all the media outlets that do great community service things. Mm -hmm. So I was giving out an award there. And then I went to Atlanta where I was filming with, Jen filming with Jennifer Williams. She had her whole situation with the scammer. So we do have a documentary coming. Um, that's all about this guy who scammed her out of her Range Rover as well as scamming multiple other people. Wow. Uh, his own family members. And then I was in Orlando for an event that I had with my girl Koya. Uh, from 104.5 in Orlando. So it was for all women. It was called Risky. And it was about HIV awareness. Okay. So, again. And I want to shout out to my guy, okay, Chef Gerald Sombright from uh, Knife and Spoon in Orlando. He got a Michelin star. Nice. Which is a huge deal at well, the restaurant, restaurant there. Absolutely. Yes. I think he's the only black chef with a male chef with a Michelin star. So that's a huge deal. It was like a party. He was like, I never do this, but I'm ready to pop a bottle. And I happen to be in Orlando, so... We popped the bottle. That's what it is. Congratulations to him. Now, I know if you've been traveling, I don't know what's been going on, but planes have, have been canceling flights, have been delayed. I was stuck in Detroit this weekend for like seven, eight hours trying to get I was stuck in Orlando. Home. Yeah, I, I don't know what's <laughs> going on with the weather, or, or I don't know if it's the weather or, or the airports or the airlines. I don't know, but it's been crazy out there. It's been a crazy weekend. we got a lot to talk about uh, this weekend. Of course, uh, Governor's Ball was over the weekend, which is a huge uh, festival. Uh, Roddy Rich uh, didn't make it, and then he was released. So we'll talk about that. Also, uh, there was a lot of boxing over the weekend. Benzino fought, uh, Black China fought, mm -hmm. Edgar Belanga fought, and then the finals on Friday. Uh, Summer Jam was over. The it was a lot. It was a lot going on over the weekend. We're gonna break it down. All right. All right. Well, let's get the show cracking. Front page and the Puerto Rican Day Parade and the Puerto Rican Day Parade. How can I forget that? It was so much going on all all, all weekend long. So crazy weekend and the finals. I said the finals. That was yeah. Friday. Oh. Yeah. And that happens again tonight. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into some front page news. What are we talking about? Well, let's talk about this bipartisan deal. A bipartisan group of senators have an agreement on principle for gun safety legislation. It's not everything at all. Nowhere near um, what we all would, I think, one, I think what the people really kind of need. But we'll tell you what's in it and all what's not. All right. We'll get into that when we come back. Keep it locked. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. I just told Pete this really was looking for his nightmare, man. They don't want to see little baby with the Barbie. With the Barbie. Let's get in some front page news. Now tonight, Warriors Boston is tied 2-2. They play at 9 p.m. Eastern time. It's been great games, man. It's been a great series so far, so I'm excited about it. Now what else you got, Yeezy? All right. Well, this is a huge deal because this is something that has not happened in 30 years. It's been uh, just at a, a stonewall. But a bipartisan group of senators unveiled an agreement for gun safety legislation just yesterday. This was breaking news. So there's an overview of a forthcoming package of reforms. Now, I'll tell you what is included in the agreement, and then I'll tell you what's not. Mm -hmm. There's red flag laws. So that's one of the most significant pieces of what they have in here. That's aimed at keeping guns out of the hands of those people who pose a threat to themselves or others. So that does require significant funding to have these red flag laws. But 19 states already have them. So they would also be eligible for funding to improve the effectiveness of those programs. Mental health and telehealth investment. So that's to increase access to mental health and suicide prevention programs and other support services available in the community. And uh, closing the so-called boyfriend loophole. That will address the so-called um, loophole, which deals with whether unmarried partners could keep guns if they were found guilty of violence against a dating partner. 
So earlier this year, Senate negotiators involved in the Violence Against Women Act dropped that provision because of objections from the NRA, and that was a huge blow to Democrats. But now they're saying at least 10 Republicans are willing to go against the NRA on an issue where they have a long-held position. So currently only a person who's been married to, lived with, or had a child with a partner they've been convicted of abusing are blocked from having a gun. But that means if you were in a serious dating relationship and convicted of domestic violence, you would now no longer be eligible to own a gun. All right, enhanced review process for buyers under 21. So that means there's a review process for people between 18 and 21 who go to buy a gun like an AR-15 under a background check review. They'll have to contact state and local law enforcement to search for any disqualifying mental health or juvenile records. Uh, Clarifying the definition of a federally licensed firearm dealer. So they said that's still being debated as far as the provisions and the language in that, but it would require more firearm sellers who are proven to be engaged in the business of selling firearms to be put on notice. They need to register to become federally licensed licensed firearm dealers because that means those dealers would have to conduct background checks under federal law. Also, school security resources. And this legislation would discuss, obviously, school security, uh, providing money to help institute safety measures in and around primary and secondary schools. Now, what they did leave out is expanded background checks for all firearm sales or transfers in the country. So right now, background checks are not required for gun sales and transfers by unlicensed and private sellers. So that's not in here. Assault weapons ban. Uh, So there's no federal ban on military-style assault weapons, and that's another measure Democrats have been pushing. Higher minimum age of purchase. So they have not included a change to the age at which a person needs to be. So they wanted to raise it from 18 to 21. That's not in here either. Now, here is uh, Senator Coons talking about this uh, gun legislation. There's been attempt after attempt Uh, to pass a broader, stronger provision, such as you just described. Uh, The House just sent over to us uh, a broader and stronger bill uh, that I and uh, I think every uh, Democrat in our group would have supported, uh, although I don't speak for all of them, something that would have gotten the support of the majority of Democrats. It was critically helpful to have Senator Cornyn, a member of the Judiciary Committee, uh, a tough on crime conservative Republican, uh, making it clear what was possible and what might get Uh, more than 10 Republican Senate votes. Because frankly, to come up short in this moment to deliver literally nothing again was just too hard a prospect to contemplate. So right now the proposal has 10 Democrats and 10 Republicans backing it. And that's crucial because you need the 60 votes to pass the Senate. All right. Well, I mean, it sounds great. It sounds wonderful. Hopefully we can pass it so they can actually put this into play. But I feel like, you know, we've been on this radio, what, 12 years Something like that, 11 years. And I feel like we've been talking about this for the last 11 years. Well, they've been trying to get something done for 30 years, and it hasn't happened. So this is the first time that they've had 10 Republicans on board that are actually willing to vote for this bill. So that's a huge deal. Yeah, because it's. I feel like every other day we talk about a different mass shooting. So hopefully we get this passed, and hopefully it cuts down some of this And it shows you how public pressure can really make things happen, because Mm -hmm. the people really want and need some type of legislation that is going to help. So there you have it. All right. Well, that is your front page news. Now, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. Let us know how your weekend was, what you did, what you didn't do, what you wanted to do, what you couldn't do, whatever it may be. You had a great weekend. Spread some positivity. If not, well, you can vent. 800-585-1051. Get it off your chest. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Wake up. Wake up. Wake your ass this is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or blessed, we want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Good morning, you guys. This must be the concert lady. I have no voice because I was at Gulf Ball all weekend working. How I was Gulf Ball? I hear your voice. My your daughter voice. wanted to go. Oh my God, Angela. I can never catch you all three, but it's okay. So we raise money <laughs> and we are volunteers. We raise money for the New York Urban League. Two things that scared the heck out of me is something like an astro world but what they did was instead of having four stages they had three to make more room for all the kids to walk around another thing that scared me guys was i thought there was going to be a riot because first amigos canceled then little wayne canceled and Ooh. thank god for asap first that came and saved the day oh i didn't know little wayne canceled yeah, wayne too. canceled he had they said he had plane troubles wayne getting canceled. in wow and then we hear about rowdy rich that was insane so i was scared that they were going to incite a riot because I had over 100 volunteers 
coming to help me sell beverages so we can raise money for the New York Urban League. But get this, Envy, and you can help me. I must have collected over 150 fake IDs. These kids don't get it. Our POS system scanned the IDs and we can tell that they're fake. Yeah. Have your kids ever encountered this? Please, kids, stop with the fake IDs. It's not going to stop. See, what happens is these kids can order it from overseas. They send you two. And a lot of the uh, uh, the IDs now, they can actually scan the barcode. So a lot of these kids are getting oh. through. Because you think about it, you know, they're 20 years old or 19. They go to college and they're trying to get to, you know, governor's ball or the bars or the clubs. They're trying to get some liquor. And it is what it is. That's what kids do, you know. Oh, my God. And some of them are so brazen. When we take them because we have to confiscate them, they're like, oh, you can keep it. I have three more. I'm yeah. like, well, you won't well, be sold at my booth. No, nah, because when, when you buy the IDs, they buy them in twos or threes. So it's not just one. That's why. Somebody made a killing with these, but I am so grateful. I pray to the gods above that it wasn't any craziness going on. Gov Ball was a huge success. Next stop. Let's be free with Missy Elliott. Thank you, guys. I love you. Keep doing amazing work. Miss B, the concert lady. Have a good week, Miss B. Hello, who's this? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Hey, what up? What up, bro? What's your name? What up, man? This Cam. Cam, what up? Get it off your chest. Hey, man, I just want to uh, spread some positivity, man. Spread some good energy to all my uh, all my people out here. I'm from Duval County, Jacksonville, Florida. Duval! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm a truck driver, too, man. So I just want to uh, spread some good love to all my fellow truck drivers out here getting it, man, trying to make a living. All right. Shout out to all the truck drivers out there. I mean, ever since I've been uh, doing the car shows and I've been transporting my my vehicles to different states, I got a new respect for you truck drivers out there, man. Y'all got to go through hell, rain, sleet, snow, yes, crazy sir. drivers, slow yes, drivers, sir. fast drivers, the police. Then you got to weigh the cars. Y'all got a lot to go through. So I support y'all and salute all the truck drivers out there. Yes, sir. We ain't earning. The wheels ain't turning. That's right. Mm-hmm. Where you have hey, a yo, good one. Yes, sir. One more thing, man. What's up? Hey, look. I had I had tickets to your car show in Houston this weekend for Father's Day. Me and my baby girl was going to go. But uh, something else came up. And uh, I, my baby girl can't go, so I ended up giving my tickets away to one of my friends so he could take his son. You think you could hook me up with tickets to Atlanta City? I got you. Yes, sir. Hey, I, I love it. I ain't never been to Atlanta City. I always wanted to go. And oh, I, I was just to there. Go. You're going to have so much fun. Yeah, you're going to have so much fun. All right, you, you stay on the line, and I'll get your information. But, yeah, absolutely, positively. Thank, thank you, sir. Hey, Yee. Hey, Yee. What's up, Yee? Hey, what's up? <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm good. Hey, man, you be out here traveling, man. You be careful out here, man. All this craziness going on. We need Yee around. There all you right, go. I'll be careful. Thank you. Right, hold on, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. Hey, man, but y'all have a good day, Hold man. on, don't hang up. I got to get your information. How am I going to get you the tickets? Hold on. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. My bad, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. And, yes, this uh, Sunday, Father's Day weekend, is my car show in Houston. So if you're around Houston or you could travel, make the trip for Father's Day, can't wait to see you guys. All right, get it off your chest. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. your time to get it off your chest whether you're mad or blessed so you better have the same energy we want to hear from you on the breakfast club hello who's this hi this is tiana hi breakfast club hey hey, hey what up kiki good morning get it off your chest <laughs> yes. first of all i'm happy i got through again i called you guys last week to give my son a shout out he graduated high school last week and i forgot to give my daughter a shout out Yesterday was her birthday. She just turned 12. Taylor, happy birthday. I told you mommy was going to get through. There happy you birthday. go. What you do for a birthday? What you doing for a birthday? <laughs> well, yesterday my nieces graduated, so we went to um, their graduation party, but she got money gift card. She was happy. Okay, that's all that matters. You know, it's, sometimes it's just the little things that, that matter. It make them smile. Well, happy birthday, and mama. Ask, thank you, and I want to give my last child a shout out. It's not her birthday, but Tamaya. I just wanted to give you a shout out too, so you want to feel no type of way. How old is Wait, she? Hold, now hold on. You, yeah, you can't be forgetting kids with the shout outs. <laughs> I know, I know. I was just so excited about my son last week. My, my <laughs> oldest daughter is 16. Her birthday's not until September, so I'll be calling back in September to give her a birthday. Okay, so all the kids got a shout <laughs> yeah, out. All now. the kids got a shout out now. All the kids got okay, a shout good. out right now. We don't want to hear this. <laughs> all right, mama. You have right? a good one. Have a good week. Thank you, you too. All right, Bye-bye. now. Hello, who's this? Yo, this is Tone. Calling from Buffalo with my girl Tisha. Hey, Tone and What's Tisha. What's up, Tone and Tisha? What's up? Get it off How your chest. Doing? Hey, 
So go ahead. Go ahead, bro. So everybody keeps talking about what went down in Buffalo and they want to pass all of these bills. But what I don't hear anybody talking about is the anti-black hate crime. And it's crazy to me because when the Asian people were being assaulted, they passed that bill within weeks. And we have literally been being hunted and killed for decades and nobody does anything about it. And the laws that they try to put in place really don't address the fact that we are literally being targeted for something we have no control over. Talk about it. White supremacy, absolutely. I mean, we've been talking about it for a long time. Anybody, any other groups gets affected. They pass these bills and these laws immediately. With us, it just seems like it just is... It just just can never get passed, right? Yeah, it's like because because they put in y'all. You, you you talked about it, ye. Um, by the way, we listen to y'all every morning. We love y'all. We ecstatic as hell about being able to speak to y'all. But ye, you were saying they put in the the changes in the bills for domestic violence. Mm-hmm. Um, the guy that killed these ten people up here in Buffalo, he wasn't commit committing no domestic violence crimes. He 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 wasn't convicted of that. That what's that gonna do for white supremacy? Mm-hmm. Right. And, uh, you know, you saw what happened with these white supremacists in Idaho over the weekend. They arrested a whole bunch of them. They're just using what happened here as a way to piggyback on all of these bills that they want to put in place, especially with those poor babies down in Texas. Just another way to piggyback these gun laws that they want to put in place, but you're not addressing the real issues that are going on. Like, y'all talking about illegal guns and ghost guns. These people had legally brought firearms. They went through all the proper... Like, you're trying to put laws in place to prevent people from doing things Mm -hmm. that already do it illegally like if i'm gonna go out and get a gun and i'm gonna get it illegally the laws are not gonna stop me from going to get my guns illegally you're not doing anything for these people who legally have these firearms absolutely these children are going out hunting at five and six and know how to sniper mm-hmm. you're saying don't teach racism in schools because it makes the non-african american children feel bad and feel guilty about something they have no control over so you're breeding a generation of people that don't realize the hurt and anger that has been put in place for generation after generation and black kids are still living with backlash of being a slave great 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 grandchild you're right well tisha you should run for office because i vote for you in a minute you sound passionate, you sound strong, and I will vote for yeah. you in a minute. Yeah, it's crazy. People run and they say, oh, you know, we're going to make this happen. We're going to pass the George Floyd, Justin's Police Act. We're going to do all of these things, and then nothing happens. All right. Well, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, you can hit us up. Now we got rumors on the way. Well, let's start off Monday with some good news, right? Let's do some... Congratulations in order. We'll tell you about Jennifer Hudson. We'll talk about Tiger Woods, Omarion, and maybe one of your favorite shows on Netflix that just got greenlit for season two. All right, we'll get into that next. Don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is The Rumor Report with Angela Yee. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor, rumor. On The Breakfast Club. So listen up. Nah, 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 nah. Well, this is beautiful to see. Floyd Mayweather Jr. was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame yesterday. I feel like this should have been done. But here he is as he's accepting the honor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, boy. This is unbelievable. This is one of the best days of my life. Well, that's somebody taping from the crowd, and he's cheering Floyd on, and Floyd starts to tear up. But, it, I mean, it's well-deserved. I don't know how the, the the Boxing Hall of Fame works. I know, like, in basketball, you have to wait a certain number of years before you can be inducted. But it's well-deserved to me. I, he's, the, he's the greatest boxer, one of the greatest boxers alive that I've ever seen fight uh, technically. And, and the way that he's able to dodge and, and, and counter, he really, he really, when I say he... He Undefeated. Mastered, yeah, he mastered the essence of boxing. So. Now, because Absolutely. of the pandemic, it was uh, the previous two induction ceremonies were postponed. Mm-hmm. So it was a very crowded affair at this one. But Roy Jones Jr., Miguel Cotto, James Tony, also female champions Regina Homage and Holly Holm were part of this year's class. And then the class of 2020 um, had Hopkins, Sugar Shane Mosley, the class of 2021 had Mayweather, Vladimir Klitschko, Andre Ward. Um, mm-hmm. So, yes. And Floyd's a good person. I, I known Floyd a long time when he first started off, when he was pretty boy Floyd. And he's a good person, good individual, real helpful. He doesn't drink. He doesn't smoke. He takes his body seriously. So it is well-deserved. All right. And Tiger Woods is officially a billionaire. So congratulations to him. He's one of the top-earning athletes in the world. 
He made over $1.7 billion in salary over the course of his 27-year career, Mm -hmm. more than anybody else Forbes has ever tracked. He told reporters, I understand different viewpoints, but I believe in legacies. I believe in major championships. I believe in big events, comparisons to historical figures of the past. There's plenty of money out here. The tour is going, but it's just like any other sport. It's like tennis. You have to go out there and earn it. So right now, there are three known athlete billionaires. Mm Mm-hmm. Tiger Woods, mm-hmm. Michael Jordan, and LeBron James. So congratulations to him. And he's still playing, by the way. He withdrew from the final round of last month's PGA Championship because of his health, but he has announced his commitment to play in this summer's Open Championship at St. Andrews. Now, I'm not a golf person, but is Tiger still out there winning? Do we know? I, I don't know. Uh, he's doing well. Okay. He's doing pretty well. All right, congratulations but to Tiger. even just as far as the culture of like people, when he did his deal with Nike, that got a lot of people buying his clothes and watching golf. People who never used to watch Absolutely. golf before. He opened that, up our community to golf. I mean, you see so many of us golfing now, and a lot of it will say they were influenced by Tiger Woods. Absolutely. All right, Omarion has a new book uh, coming out on September 13th, and it's called Unbothered, The Power of Choosing Joy. Hmm. And it explores three sections, spirituality, mental health, and physical wellness. It also has breathing exercises, meditation, yoga, dancing, ancient mantras, and an overall embrace of positivity. He talks about his own personal struggles, and he hopes that this book will promote forgiveness and emotional intelligence. Yeah, I I, I would say one thing about Amarion. For his life and all that he's been through, the fact that he's still happy and still so positive, I would definitely read that book. All right, well, here's what he had to say. Brightest moments and greetings to all. What's up? I know you see it. Yes, I've been working on this. I am so excited to present this to you all, okay? When you're speaking about Omarion now, go ahead and add author to the conversation, okay? Amongst the other hyphens, yes. Unbothered, the power of choosing joy. Joy being the feeling of great pleasure and happiness. Don't we all deserve happiness? Yes, we do. Journal prompts, mantras, breathing exercises. I give up all my keys. I give you all my gems, you know, to help you and further you on your journey to wholeness. It's on the way. Make sure you pre-order it and follow me on all my socials so, you know, y'all can stay updated. As a matter of fact, if y'all can, just go ahead and tell Oprah we're going to start a book club, put this on her list, okay? Make sure y'all get it. Unbothered, the power of choosing joy. Now, th- now think about Omarion. She, his uh, <laughs> ex-wife was dating his one of his friends from his group. Then his group was all types of different rumors, and he's still happy and still positive. He wasn't married. Is it dating? Is his baby mother? Uh, yeah, 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 but but still, goodness gracious, he's still positive after all that. I'm definitely reading. All that right, book. and Jennifer Hudson has become an EGOT, so congratulations to her. That means she has an Emmy, a mm-hmm. Grammy, an Oscar, and now a Tony. So nice. congratulations. congratulations to her. Drop a bomb for her one time. Amazing. Yes, the Tony Awards were at Radio City Music Hall over the weekend. And so, you know, that's a really esteemed class of people for her to have all of those. Of course. And so congratulations. What a big deal for her. Um, now, some of the people who have EGOT, you know, John Legend's an EGOT winner. Yeah. And, and so is um, Whoopi Goldberg. Mm-hmm. So, yes. That's and, it? <laughs> That's it, just John Legend? Well, no, there's other people, but uh, I'm thinking about who you know. Okay. Like, do you know who Jonathan Tunick is? Or? Yeah, of course. Who's that? He's a country singer. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Rita Moreno's one. Mm-hmm. You want to know all of them? No. Okay, I'm thank good. you. All right. I'm good with John Legend and Whoopi Goldberg. All right, so um, another win is, though, for MJ the Musical, by the way. And I, have you seen that yet? I have not seen MJ the Musical. Well, Miles Frost won for Best Performance by an Actor in a Leading Role in a Musical. And he did an amazing job as Michael Jackson. So if you have ever have a chance... Uh, to go see that on Broadway. Highly recommended you have the time of your life. You should bring the kids and everything. Also, best performance by an actress in a featured role in a play is Felicia Rashad for Skeleton Crew. So congratulations to them. Okay. All right, I'm Angela Yee, and that is your Rumor Report. All right, now we got front page news. Next, what are we talking about? Yes, and let's talk about 31 people with ties to a white nationalist group were arrested, and that's because they were planning to riot near a pride parade in Idaho. All right, we'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Hey, what up, y'all? It's DJ MV. Have you taken a closer look at the General Insurance yet? Switch to the General and you could save over five hundred dollars. Call eight hundred General or visit thegeneral.com. The General Auto Insurance Services Inc. An insurance agency, Nashville, Tennessee. Some restrictions apply. 
Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Now, tonight, game five of the finals, Warriors Boston. Of course, the series is tied 2 2. Happens tonight at 9 p.m., and they are playing in the Bay. So. Should be a great game. What else you got, Yeezy? All right. Well, let's talk about these 31 people with ties to a white nationalist group were arrested for conspiracy to riot. This was near a pride parade that was happening in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Now, police received an alarm 911 call, and they believe these 31 men are affiliated with the white nationalist group Patriot Front. They allegedly had plans to riot that pride event Saturday. The large group, they were seen piling into a U-Haul at a hotel. They had riot gear, and they were later pulled over and arrested. And so that's great for the person that called 911 for law enforcement agencies who were present, who responded uh, throughout the day. The North Idaho Pride Alliance, which organized the event, released a statement. Uh, they said, as a small community nonprofit, North Idaho Pride Alliance is taking a much needed day of rest after successfully organizing a momentous, joyful, and safe Pride in the Park community celebration under the most challenging of circumstances. And so here is what uh, Chief Lee, Police Chief Lee, of uh, had to say about the white nationalist arrest. Uh, it is clear from uh, to us, based on the gear that the individuals had all with them, uh, the stuff they had um, in the possession and in the U-Haul with them, along with paperwork that was seized from them, that they came to riot downtown. I love the fact that they uh, caught them gentlemen. I mean, somebody called 911, of course, but you see 30 white men with khakis and uniform style hats, face covered up, hopping in the back of a U-Haul? Yes, call 911. Absolutely positive. I'm calling 911 immediately. Either I'm feeling like they're pledging or something, or they're about to F ish up. So, yes, I'm calling 911. Yeah, they said they were all dressed like a little army. They yeah. had on khaki pants, blue shirts, they had hats with plastic inside them. Uh, they also were equipped with shields, shin guards, other riot gear, along with papers that they described as similar to an operations plan that a police or military group would put together for an event. They found at least one smoke grenade as well. <laughs> And members of the Patriot Front believe that their white ancestors conquered America and bequeathed it to them, according to the Anti-Defamation League. But khaki pants and blue polos, don't that just sound weird? Like they work at Blockbuster. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> like khaki pants and blue, all right, whatever, whatever works, man. But I'm glad we got them off the streets. All right, and let's talk about this bipartisan gun deal. A bipartisan group of senators have unveiled an agreement for gun safety legislation. So this is a forthcoming package of reforms to address one of the hugest uh, things that are happening here in the United States. Now, they do have to sort out some of the framework of how the legislation will be written, but the big deal is that this does have the support of 10 Republican senators, which would give the proposal enough support to overcome the Senate filibuster. This is legislation they've been trying to pass for over 30 years, and it definitely does not have everything that they would want in these bills, but it is, I would say, a start, right? And it also shows how public pressure uh, in spite of the Republicans getting so much support from the NRA, public pressure can get things done. So some of the things include red flag laws, which would keep guns out of the hands of people who pose a threat to themselves or others, mental health and telehealth investment, uh, closing the boyfriend loophole, which means that it used to be that a person who's, uh, if you're married or you live with somebody or had a child with a partner, if you get convicted of abusing, you're blocked from having a gun. But now if you, you're in a serious relationship mm -hmm. and convicted of domestic violence, you would no longer be eligible to own a gun. Enhanced review process for buyers under 21. Also, this has to do with a licensed firearm dealers clarifying the definition of what a federally licensed firearm dealer is, school security resources. Now, some things that are not in the bill, expanded background checks, so that would uh, doesn't include a provision that would expand background checks for all firearm sales or transfers in the country. They're not required right now for gun sales and transfers, transfers by unlicensed and private sellers. Uh, there's no assault weapons ban. There's no higher minimum age of purchase, so it's not going to go from 18 to 21. So those are some of the things that are not included uh, in this new legislation that should pass. Right. I hope it does pass. And I mean, we, we have to do something. We have to change something. I remember going to Hampton University, and, and I think I was a junior or a senior, and I turned 21. And the first thing I did was I bought me a 9 millimeter. I bought me a Glock. Now, was I mentally prepared to have a, a gun and really know the consequences of having a gun and owning a gun? No. You're still not. No, I am now. But back then, no. There was no way in hell. I was a 21-year-old kid. You're kind of a hothead, though, still. I'm not a hothead anymore. But back then, I was definitely a hothead. 
I was definitely a hothead. And and should I have owned a gun back then? No. I, like you said, I was a hothead. If there was a situation, anything going on, I could have used that gun and I could be in jail right now. Mm-hmm. Just because I'm 21 of, of age doesn't mean I am I should be able to own a firearm and know what that firearm does. And when I bought the firearm, there was no instructions. There was nothing telling me, oh, you can use the gun on this or self-defense or this, that, and the other. No, you 21, you go in there, you show your license. Here, sir, here's your gun. Here's some ammunition. Have a nice day. I don't think that's responsible. Well, here's what Chuck Schumer had to say about this gun legislation. I am particularly, particularly pleased that for the first time in close to 30 years, Congress seems ready to reject the vice-like grip that the NRA has had on the Congress and move forward to meaningful gun legislation. All right. Well, that is your front page news. All right. Thank you, Miss Yee. And then also you got to think, you, you have all these different places spewing hate and now you give a kid that that's receiving all this hate a gun at 21? Some kid that's watching Alex Jones on YouTube? Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. I was watching that special on CNN. I mean, I don't know what is wrong with people. My goodness. That's all I have to say about that. All right. Well, that is front page news. Now, let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. Let's talk about the court using lyrics and songs against, evidence against people when they go to court. Let's talk mm-hmm. about that. Uh, over the weekend, Meek Mill was performing at a concert, and he, you know, talked about supporting Gunna and Thug. If you know me, if you've been following me in music, I come from the same hoods that you come from. I rap about the same that Slime and Gunna don't rap about. So basically, if we charging people for their crimes, I'm basically guilty of everything they talked about because I talk about the same things. I want to say support Young Thug, support YSL, support Gunna. Write them guys, make sure you hit the officials, your governments, whoever's in control in your town, and fight for people like us, people like us that fight for you guys, black art, protect black art, because now they using our lyrics against us, and taking that into a courtroom, and this is the way that we found the way to feed our family and make millions. All right, well, let's talk about it. 800-585-1051. Should the court be able to use a rapper's lyrics and songs as evidence against them? I'm torn about this. Yeah, it's an ongoing conversation. I'm very torn. You know, they have this rap music on trial bill they're trying to pass in New York. And they have, like, Jay-Z, Meek Mill, Big Sean, right. Robin Thicke, Killer Mike. Big, uh, all these people are among artists who have signed on in an effort to change that law that would prevent rap lyrics from being used as evidence in criminal trials. And there's senators that are behind that because it's supposed to be art. Correct. But then you might have some cases, and I know you're about to talk about it when we come back, where you're like, I mean... Yes, a Houston rapper over the weekend. did rap about exactly yes. what you just did. A Houston rapper over the weekend, he rapped about his songs about robbing ATMs. He got arrested over the weekend for what? Robbing an ATM. And he's done it allegedly numerous times. Probably shouldn't rap about it. Probably not. So when you get locked up, I'm not supposed to use that? I don't know, so I'm kind of torn. Let's talk about it. We'll take your calls when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Let's talk about it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We Angela are, who? I said Angela Yee. You said E. I said Angela Yee. Charlamagne the Guy, we are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you just join us, we're taking your calls, 800-585-1051. We're asking, should the court be able to use a rapper's lyrics or song as evidence against them? Uh, I was saying early, uh, earlier, I'm torn with this, right? Now, I looked at Young Thug's case, and I, and I seen the prosecutor, and the prosecutor, you know, quoted a Young Thug lyric when he was like, yeah, and F the judge. Now, it had nothing to do with the case, but the reason he said F the judge is because he wanted the judge to side with the prosecutor. And obviously, they, they did. So, in that case, I don't think that's right. But in Houston, there was a rapper that rapped, around, uh, that rapped about Robin ATMs. La DC on the Riley. Yeah, let's let's hear it. Out of state, Dodger Jakes, running with the Florida place. Florida place. I hit the road and got that money and by 40 states. You know, we specialize in burglarizing, better guard your safe. Loud cold, we doing the dash, but we trying to avoid the taste. Yeah. Slow down, you can drive right. Put that bitch in cruise control. Cruise control. Let me know if you get tired, cause we can't let you lose control. Uh-huh. Road running every day, the next two weeks we staying gone. We, stayin we out gone. here getting this money, we just praying that we make it I home. Pray. Now he was arrested over the weekend for what, ye? Uh, he he and uh, a couple of his friends actually robbed an ATM technician. Now, allegedly, this is 
They've done this numerous times. So yeah. this is what they do, and then he rapped about it in the song. How could you not use that in court? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like I don't, I, I don't know. I'm torn because if yeah, if, his name is Two and Three Jug God, and he has a song called Make It Home. That song, right? Because if you're gonna talk about your crimes in a song and then do the crime, uh, how could you? I not? feel like maybe if it's vague, then no. But if it's something that's like very specific, like but, I don't know, it's hard to say because it has to be across the board, right? You can't say yeah. it's not cool with Young Thug, but it was cool in this situation. I get it. You got to figure out when it comes to laws, they're kind of across the board. So either you agree with it or you don't. Yeah, but then you know, like, but there's so many rappers. Like you, you've heard Jay Z talk about. You know, rapping about violence in his songs. You heard 50 do it. You heard Nas do it. You heard T.I. do it. You heard Snoop do it. You know what I mean? Does that mean we should lock them up for, for, for things against them? No. Now, if they said, hey, I'm going to shoot you in the face, or maybe I did shoot you in the face and take your eye out, and it, you really did that, and then you rapped about it after you did it for real, and it like totally lines up with what happened, you know, that might be a whole nother situation than if you're vaguely saying, you know, hey, if somebody does something to me, you know, I'll shoot him. All right. I don't think you should be able to use that. Well, let's let's go to the phone lines. Hello, who's this? This is Vanity. Hey, Vanity. Where you calling from? I'm calling from Savannah. Savannah, Georgia. Okay, what's your thoughts, mama? So, I feel like if an artist is going to, like, I definitely feel like, of course, you protect black art. Mm -hmm. But if you are going to take the time to rap about the crimes that you are potentially committing in your music, then that has every right to be used um, as evidence against you. Now, in the event that you're not doing these things, you're not out here moving drugs and, you know, toting guns and all these things, then that is a reflection of falsifying in your music, which I feel like your fans want to hear what's actually true to them. So either you're lying or you're indicting yourself. But either <laughs> way it goes, like, you can't have it both ways. Right. Either way, you either a liar or you telling on yourself, and that's not the smartest thing. Yeah, but I feel like in in hip hop, especially especially street rap, you know, people are talking about shooting people and this, that, and the other. I, if you come in my crib, I shoot you. Like you, you talk about it, you rap about it, you hear about it. But then, if, if a case actually happens against somebody, how do you go back and use that lyric? Because he didn't say I shot Tommy, he didn't say I shot Peter, he didn't say I shot little little Sean. He didn't say none of that. You know, mm -hmm. so it's 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 kind of. It's kind of weird. It's like a Key and Peele skit come to life. Yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> Hello, who's this? Yo, yo, what's up, man? I'm Ski. Ski, what up? Where you calling from? Charleston, South Carolina. Okay. Now, we're asking, uh, should the court be able to use a rapper's lyric or song as evidence against him? Most definitely not. Only if they're going to try the person that write it or the artist that's lying on their lyrics, too. Oh, so you say you know, some, some rappers it. don't write their own lyrics, so... Okay, so somebody else wrote it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that only because I sometimes write lyrics with people and they get deep, so it's like, oh, are we got? do we have somebody to, to say, well, this person is lying or that person wrote it? You know what I'm saying? Can't Ski, who you, write, who you writing for, Ski? What do you mean? My, uh, my, my, my brother was a rapper, R.I.P. Baby C. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we kind of did our thing. Uh -huh. But I also had lists, artists that I wrote for. Okay. We got we got some music out. I'm a DJ too, MV. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I hear as Charlamagne would say, you talking Geechee. Uh, so I, I would say, uh, don't box nobody in the moat. Did I get that right? No, we can chop mop. <laughs> I don't know oh, if gosh. I got that right. But 800-585-1051. Arrest envy. I know, I tried. We're asking, can, should the court be able to use a rapper's lyric or song as evidence against him? That is the question. Let's talk about it. It's The Breakfast Club. I know in there. I am 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 in there. Call me. Add your opinion to The Breakfast Club top. Come on. 800-585-1051. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you just join us, we're talking about should the court be able to use a rapper's lyric or song as evidence against them? Of course, we're talking about Gunner and Thug over the weekend. Uh, Meek Mill had this to say. I want to say support Young Thug, support YSL, support Gunner. Write them guys. Make sure you hit the officials, your governments, whoever they control in your town and fight for people like us. People like us that fight for you guys, black art, protect black art because now they using our lyrics against us and taking it into a courtroom and this is the way that we found the way to feed our family and make millions. Now I told you guys, I'm torn. 
I am torn because, like I said, in some cases like that, the rapper from Houston that rapped about robbing ATMs and breaking into ATMs, and then he got arrested over the weekend for breaking into and robbing an ATM. And allegedly, he's done this before. So if you rap about it, I'm not supposed to use that? And imagine if you do something to somebody, right, uh, commit a crime, and then you rap about it in a song, how that would affect you and your family and people hearing it if, if somebody really did something to you and then they had the nerve to rap about it. Yes, and there, there are songs like that. There are songs that when I go to different markets, I don't play because I never know if the person's family is in the club. And some B- songs but are just songs. Some songs are just art. And so that is sometimes it's just telling a story. It's like if it's a movie about something, you know, should that person be held liable? It's just hard to say because there's no one answer I feel like across the board that you can say yes it should be or no it shouldn't. It's usually like a case by case situation. Yeah, but you can't you can't let the the judge and the prosecutors go case by case because, you know, they, they don't understand the culture and they're just going to try to get something done and somebody convicted. Hello, who's this? Hello, this is Dupree from Omaha, Nebraska. What up, DJ Envy and Angela, Angela Yee? What's yeah, up, Dupree? What's it. going on? Talk to us. Man, uh, first of all, I like to say free all the rappers, man, or RP to all the rappers. All of them? Uh, but y'all, y'all know these white people, man. They want to uh, do anything to lock us black people up. And just like you said, DJ Envy, with the young boy rapping about hitting the ATM, you know what I mean? If he's using his rap lyrics and he's in a local area, you telling on yourself so they can use it as evidence. But as far as Young Thug and Gunner case, man, they just going to have to get the evidence to prove that they actually did that. So... Yeah, but you, you know, the sad part about it is we, we, at that point now, we're allowing somebody that's not from our culture to decide what they should use and what they shouldn't use. You know what I mean? Which is the scary part. But these white people always been in control. So we ain't, we ain't stopping them. We just got to be careful and live and learn from what's going on. Like how McNeil said, uh, how McNeil said in his little performance, say, we just, you got to be careful now. You know what I mean? They did it to Young Thug and them. So it's like, just, be like Lil Dirk, man. Be like the OTF when Lil Dirk said, this is all props, you know what I mean? So the police can't use this against you. That's how you got to do You got to think ahead. You got to be smart. No, you you're right. Or even like Casanova when when, when, they took, when they used his lyric and said, oh, you said you gang and this, that, and the other. And what, what did 50 say, 50 say on that song? I am not gang. I do not gang bang. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, I mean, maybe the answer is stop saying that stuff in your music. But that's what people like. That's what sells records. I guess that's what they're saying. Hello, who's this? My name is Amanda. Amanda, what are your thoughts, mama? Okay, so my issue is is that if we're going to charge them for using their art and their freedom of speech and their words, are we going to charge the people that make the movies that predict what's going to happen? Especially when it comes to famine, COVID, any other diseases, wars, like... Hmm? You lost I don't know if that's about child. committing a crime. I'm confused. We're talking about the police... As I mean, far but, as but I'm sure crimes. if somebody wrote a movie and then committed the crime, and I'm did sure what they, they and did what they wrote the movie about. Yeah, I'm sure they would lock them up. But you know, there have been plenty of movies like that. They're like who? Predicted like what? with. Okay, so let me give an example. Go ahead. In reference to what they did with COVID, what's the name of that movie that came out years ago about the girl that sneezed and everybody caught the disease and they didn't do <laughs> nothing about it and they knew what was going on? I don't think that's the about. same thing as COVID. <laughs> Uh, that girl didn't start COVID. If she started COVID, she should be locked up. I'm with you. No, I'm not saying she started COVID. What I'm saying is in terms of the lack of evidence given, the lack of information given, we're not going to get the full story of what happened with them in their case. I think I think that's a different situation. What they're saying is if somebody commits a crime, right, gets arrested, and they want to charge you with it, that they could use your lyrics. Now, if you wrote a movie, but you didn't commit nah, the crime. I'm with that lady. That lady wrote the movie about COVID before we knew COVID. She should that be charged she started, started COVID. Yes, she should get locked up for COVID. I'm with that lady. I don't think the lady wrote the movie. She just started it. Nah, should... I'm with that lady that just called. I'm, okay. with, I'm with you, mama. Let's go to one more caller. Hello, who's this? Yo, this is MJ from M- Detroit. MJ, what up, though? What's going on? I was just out there in Detroit, man. What's going on? Talk to us. What's your thoughts? So so here's my thing. I remember when Young Thug was going to an event, and they asked him what was his thoughts on the events in the black community that was taking place, you know, with the police shootings and everything else going on. And Young Thug said, I don't feel like rappers should have anything to do with that. I don't, I don't, I don't want to have nothing to do with none of that situation. So I say keep that same energy. Why is Mick Mills politicking for him and asking for the black community to, to support him, and he don't care nothing about the uh, black community. I mean, he, that's ridiculous. He, now, he didn't say he didn't care about the black community. He didn't say that. He, they asked him a question, and he, and he said I, I he, he didn't want to speak on certain things. But 
I do know Young Thug and Gunna has opened up shops to give kids uh, school Rosary. supplies. They help put people through college. They have done a lot of things for the community. So I wouldn't say he does nothing for the community. Maybe in that topic, he didn't want to speak on it because he didn't have enough information. Like a lot of times people ask you things. And if I don't have enough information, you don't want to say the, the wrong topic, thing. I don't want to say the wrong thing. So I'm not going to say anything. So I'm not going to say Thug and Gunna do nothing for the community because I, I know for a fact that they have done before. Well, I don't know about Gunner, but Young Thug, I, I just that interview rubbed me the wrong way. Then the second part is Lil Wayne told him a long time ago, real G's move in silence like lasagna. Oh, God. So, so he should so, use those lyrics. Right. So, I lyrics. mean, just, why, why would you tell him yourself in a rap song? I mean, that's just... Foolishness. I, look, I, I I look. I know Lil Wayne probably done beat up and shot some people in his song too. So you can't you can't use Lil Wayne as an as, as an example either. <laughs> Jay has done, Meek has done, Fifty has done. Are I you mean, over here snitching, Evie? No, I'm saying they haven't really done. Are that. you trying to tell the cops to go listen to these man's lyrics? Drake has even done it. So I what? Mean, are you snitching on Drake? But, 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 but that doesn't mean oh that they really God. did. Oh my God! But, but they, all they, right, <laughs> let's move on. Evie over here snitching. We got to keep it moving. Oh my goodness! What's the moral of the story? Man, don't do nothing in front of Evie. <laughs> Yo, shut up, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we got rumors on the way. Yes, Justin Bieber, he was supposed to be on tour, but he's had to cancel his next shows. And we'll tell you what's going on with him. Really unfortunate situation. We'll tell you the syndrome that he has that is preventing him from touring. All right, we'll get into that next. Keep it locked. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hey, happy Monday. We are back for the work week. Y'all excited on a Monday? Now, once again, Envy has disappeared. I don't know why he keeps doing that. Charlemagne is off uh, from work today. I feel like all three of us have not been in the same place at once. So uh, there you have it. And a lot of activity over the weekend. I know there were a lot of events going down. Uh, the Puerto Rican Day Parade happened. Shout out to Angie Martinez and Fat Joe. I saw them on the float out here. I think, when's the last time they had a Puerto Rican Day Parade? It's been a minute, right? Yeah, last year. Oh, they had it last year? Yeah. I thought they didn't have it last year. I thought, for some reason in my head, with COVID and everything, it wasn't a lot of things going on. But all right. Well, everybody's talking about COVID and how it might just be like the common cold and all the different variants. Hey, easy. Oh, hey, Envy. Welcome back to work. I'm going to go just my, strolling in here. My What's morning, my cliff Why would you wait water. until right when we're going back I up? Asked him, when you were the main minutes. one that said you were gone way longer than two minutes. I wasn't minutes. gone no longer than two minutes. Right. Was he gone longer than two minutes? Yeah. Oh, my bad. I went to get my water and my, my cliff ball. This guy just came strolling. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? It's not a regular job where you could just stroll in. We're on the actual bathroom air. To get something to eat. There's no interns. So, so you got... went to the bathroom and you went to get something to eat, but that took you two minutes. It was fast. It was a quick pee. It doesn't add up. Goodness gracious. Well. You know you don't have to. Well, Charlemagne is out. So um, if you want to <laughs> give Donkey the day to somebody, you can 800-585-1051. Yes. Right, whoever you want to give donkey to, your mama, your daddy, your baby daddy, somebody you work with, a friend. It doesn't matter. Whoever you want to give donkey of the day to, 800-585-1051. It's so funny. You said that it's Gay Pride Month. You said Charlemagne is out. <laughs> you said <laughs> We're up. talking about that. All right. Well, we got rumors on the way. What are we talking about? Yes, and we are going to be talking about Roddy Rich. You know, he was arrested for gun possession. We'll tell you what happened. All right. We'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. It's about time. What's going on? Yeah. Rumor Report. Rumor Report. This is the Rumor Report with Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. Well, Justin Bieber posted a video to let people know why he's not able to perform. He's had to postpone his tour. And it's because he has a rare neurological disorder that can cause facial paralysis called Ramsey-Hunt syndrome. Here's what he said. As you can probably see from my face, I have... Uh this syndrome called Ramsey Hunt syndrome. And it is from this virus that attacks the nerve in my ear and my facial nerves and has caused my face to have paralysis. So for those who are frustrated by my cancellations of the next shows, um, I'm just physically obviously not <laughs> capable of doing them. But obviously my body's telling me I gotta slow down. I'm doing all these facial exercises to get my face back to normal. It's just time. And we don't know how much time that's gonna be. It's a complication from the same virus that causes shingles and chicken pox, and mm -hmm. you can get rashes around your face, hearing loss, one-sided facial paralysis. They said it typically takes about three weeks to fully recover, and it's mostly in adults over 60, and rarely is it experienced by children, they said. Oddly, I know two people that this has actually happened to. It took longer than three weeks. One person, it took three weeks for it to heal, and the other person took months. 
And then after they finally uh, started to heal from it, they actually got COVID. So I know two people that has actually happened to. And like you said, the, the, the side of your face is pretty much paralyzed. Like we, you can't, your eye looks crazy. You can't move. It's hard to chew. It's crazy. Yeah, he said it's been hard for him to eat. Mm -hmm. I know people who have Bell's palsy, but I've never heard of Ramsey. What's Hansen. Bell's palsy? That's that? that's when like when it's another kind of like I guess a muscle disorder with one side of your face. Okay. You know. Maybe that's what they had. Maybe they didn't have. Yeah, that, I think that's I a lot more yeah, common. That's what they had. Bell's palsy. They <laughs> you just make stuff up. <laughs> I What's guess wrong I definitely with you? did. But I heard the par the, the the you know paralyzed on the half of your face. So I thought that was yeah. yeah. That's Bell's palsy. Yeah. Also, sorry, <laughs> sorry for the people that I know. <laughs> I just <laughs> gave you a disease. Diagnosed with something else. <laughs> sorry. All right, now, Saucy Santana, there were some tweets that resurfaced about Beyonce and Blue Ivy. Um, so somebody had, and these are old tweets from 2014. Somebody mm -hmm. wrote, I just want to be Blue Ivy, and he responded, nappy-headed or. And then Jeez. somebody else said, I'm sorry, but Northwest clears Blue Ivy, has several car seats blue, and he responded, just said this yesterday. Then um, people were coming for him on social media and Saucy Santana was very clear to, it'd be the people in the comments trying to force you to apologize or say sorry to who? To y'all? If I did something to offend someone I should apologize to them not you bitches told y'all y'all think got power over people but go ahead and then he said stop all that cap trying to ruin people's careers because you were at home miserable and broke I was miserable and broke too making childish hateful tweets in 2014 I'm 28 years old a grown ass adult a completely different mindset on life from when I was 20 but y'all knew that celebrities are human not robots and they for damn sure ain't perfect I still talk about it bits like a dog to this day not publicly because my opinion matters to a lot of people now I be chilling I don't even insert myself in ish that don't involve me y'all gonna he, leave saucy alone and then he said, fake woke ass bitches. People don't care about old tweets. The internet had this weird thing with power, thinking they have the power to cancel someone. Newsflash, you don't. Y'all be thinking y'all have someone by the balls about situations you don't give a damn about. And Saucy Santana, by the way, was also performing in Houston over the weekend. And here's how it went. He was doing the uh-oh dance in Houston. They was going crazy. We didn't hear nobody booing. So. That's right. Show them how to walk, too, Saucy. Show but, them how to walk, walk, walk. All right, Envy, walk, sit down. Walk, sit down, walk, Envy. Walk, walk. Show them how to walk, walk. All right, sorry. Come on. Um, I'm appalled. All right. Well, that is your rumor report. All right. Next up is Donkey of the Day. Who do uh, you want to give the donkey to? 800 you? 585 Whoever you want to give the donkey to, call us up right now. It's The oh Breakfast gosh. Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Leaving a child in a hot vehicle can lead to their death very quickly. If you see a child left unattended, call 911. If the child looks unresponsive, do what it takes to get him or her out safely. It's your time to nominate a donkey of your own. Remember now, that's it's how they choose. Call in now, 800-585-1051. Hello, who's this? This is Big Marla from Hampton, Virginia, 757. H-U, what up, man? And doing good, what's up, Henry? What's up, G? What up, who you giving your donkey to? I want to give my donkey the date to all the daddies out there that's not taking care of their kids. Okay. There you go. Tell them. Hey, 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 hey. I, I hate to do this, but I got to get one more donkey, man. Can I get one more? Go ahead, brother. We got to give a donkey to my man for real for taking something in the water from us in D.C., man. No. Nah. Now nah, you can't. Now nah, you can't. Now nah, you know. That hurt. That hurt. That hurt. That hurt. Now know, let's he, talk about the reason why. You know the reason why he did it. That, that, it's a... It's a lot of it's a lot more water in the state of Virginia. Every nah. It's a lot more water. I mean, his, his family member got killed, and he's he's having problems with the police out there. So he, <laughs> it didn't feel right for him. So he moved it, and it's not that far. It's only two hours away, brother. Three hours three away. Three hours. Envy, you went three to hours away. You, three you should hours. give Donkey of the Day to the police officers that's you know making things difficult hey, for him. And you know, Pharrell does hey, so Envy. much for the for the community. What's up, brother? Hey, hey, hey Envy, well, you've been going to school here. There's water. We could have did it in any. We could have did it on a peninsula. We could have did it in Richmond. Mm -hmm. We could have did it anywhere else in the state that has nothing nah, to do Nah, just Pharrell ain't messing with VA right now. So he said we're going to move it down a oh, little oh. bit. And then when they get things oh. right, he'll move it right back. It's only two and a half hours away, bro. So punish the, so punish the state for what Virginia Beast is, is what you're saying. He's, okay. he's, punishing, he's pu punishing Virginia. For the, 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 yeah, the, the state. Like you said, the state. The legal the system. He doesn't want the state to make any money off of him until they figure out what they, they should do and do it the right way. I'm not mad at that. 
That's like artists okay. when something happens to something in the state and artists like, I'm not going back to the state. Yeah, it affects the people too, but hopefully change will happen because of that. All right, well, well DC police ain't the best in the world, so okay, good luck with that. <laughs> You're right. Have a good one, brother. <laughs> Thank y'all, luck. All right, brother. Hello, who's this? Yo, what's up? What up, what up? What's up, Ahmad? Who you want to give your donkey to, brother? Man, I kind of want to give it to you on the cool. You know I mean? <laughs> why you want, why you want to give it to me? Man, because I've I kind of been waiting on my car show to stick this since, like, April, bro. You said what? I said I've been waiting on my car show to stick this since, like, April. Wow, and what month? It's June what? now. What's going on? You won tickets on air? It's Sunday. Yeah, you gave it to me back in April. April right. 5th. And, and what's, what's the problem? Time, and I told you and when you won it. the tickets, well, the car show is this Sunday in Houston uh, at the NRG Stadium. Of course, Houston versus New York. And I told you... Your name is on a list. We don't have he physical, wants physical tickets, tickets, tickets anymore. We don't do physical tickets anymore. He wants anymore. physical tickets, and he wants physical anymore. tickets, and Even he wants them. Even when you buy them. tickets on a Ticketmaster hey. event price, they email you to scan the barcode. I told you, your name is there. Ahmad, your I don't name know. Is this there. sounds shicey to me. Mercedes I wouldn't want to just show up without tickets, Mercedes. hoping that my name hey, is there. The dude. The dude took all my information. I was thinking I was waiting on something. He'd say, I'm sending it over short. Mm -mm. No. Mm -hmm. you, your name is... Oh, your, your, we have a list of people that won tickets, and your name will be he on that list. He can't get no e-ticket confirmation? There is no e-ticket. Y'all got to step it thing. up, baby. Come on, right. man. I, Mercedes right, and my manager, June, I'll will be at the up. door. You pull right up. We want you to be able to print I'm, something I'm out, at least. No, we ain't printing nothing up. Paper's right. expensive. Okay. Hey, I'll pull up, man. But, hey, I don't want to be looking crazy. I'm going I'm to I'm 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 have to find you if I... If they be looking, if they tell me they turn me around or something, you're gonna, gonna be, be at the crazy. you're gonna be at the door like I'm on the list. Hello, who's this? Yes, sir. Hey, who you wanna give donkey to? I wanna give it to Angela Yee. Why? <laughs> well, last week she gave this young lady some very very bad advice about her baby daddy taking his kids over somewhere to the other lady house while she was out of town. Okay, yeah, he didn't even check with her. She he just did it without well, even checking in with her. She had no idea. Well, well, she had an idea because she said her and the lady already got a bad no relationship. But them have a bad relationship. They had to meet at some point. No, she said that she did not even know until he told her after she came back, after he already took her child over there. Well, stop giving bad advice, she. I don't know if that was bad advice. I wasn't yeah, I don't know. Right. I don't know I if it's okay for somebody to just randomly I take wasn't. my child to some woman's house who don't like me. Oh, yeah, I wasn't paying attention. All right. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, you can vent at any time. Now, when we come back, Teslin Figaro will be joining us. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. The host of the Straight Shot No Chaser podcast on the Black Effect iHeartRadio Podcast Network. Tesla Figaro. Welcome. Tesla Figaro. Welcome. Thank welcome, you. Welcome, welcome. You forgot to say Hood Whisperer. I didn't say it? No. Oh, I thought I said the Hood Whisperer. Oh, okay, know. I'm sorry. The yeah. Hood Whisperer. Yes. Tesla Figaro. You name me this. Well, well Tesla is here, man. And, you know, there's nobody that breaks down politics in a digestible way that the regular, everyday, average Hood can understand. Appreciate Like that. Tesla. Mm -hmm. So tell us about this January 6th hearing committee. Why all of a sudden is it all this pomp and circumstance? It's all over TV. It's all over the news. What are they trying to get out of this situation? And why situation? now? That's a great question. Probably more a better question for our elected officials. We do know that everything is strategic when we look at midterms and things coming up and bumping that back up. I actually believe, mm -hmm. though, they have been investigating and looking at the data and looking at the facts and going through the information. That is a long process. I'm not making excuses because, you know, I don't make excuses for politicians at all. Mm -hmm. um, but a, a lot of uh, the evidence gathering, I do believe, you know, took longer, even though we can see with our eyes what happened. Just like when we talk about with police reform, police brutality, we see what happens, but there's still evidence that has to come into that. But to be honest with you, and you know me personally, mm -hmm. the January 6th thing to me was just white folks, white folk. I mean, just yeah. to be honest, mm -hmm. I, you and I, we talk a lot about mm -hmm. that. That has not been one of the things that I've just been following, mm -hmm. um, just to be honest with you. I'm more concerned uh, with the issues of black America, and I just believe that most black folks, um, even though I know that is a you know, what they did can can lead to other things. Mm -hmm. Most black folks are not really talking about January 6th, mm -hmm. probably the way that some people think that they should, mm -hmm. because it's just not affecting their everyday life. So I, it's just not something that I just... Why are really you investigating? In? And that's what I'm, I'm confused by, because you got a lot of them that have been convicted already. Mm -hmm. So why are they investigating? What are they trying to prove? Well, yeah, members of Congress that, that they said could possibly have been involved. True. Mm -hmm. Well, somebody always is involved. It's mm -hmm. a system. That's mm -hmm. why we call it systematic 
racism. It's never just one person or damn sure not when it's time for black folks to go to jail. Mm -hmm. 94 mm -hmm. crime bill to be exact. Mm -hmm. uh, it's always a conspiracy. It's always somebody that is behind somebody and behind somebody. The key is uh, the question is really getting down, you know, getting that information, getting down to it, having the facts to actually prosecute and win. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really have a lot of faith in, in that process, Me to neither. be honest with you. I don't have a lot of faith in the system itself. Mm -hmm. So as far as I'm concerned, white folks, white folk, and that's about my only comment I have on that. Well, you, you don't have any faith in the system, but the midterms is right around the corner. Yeah. Should Democrats have any faith <laughs> that they going to keep the House in the Senate? Uh, no, they're going to get slaughtered. Wow. That's just the bottom line. Very similar to my hand. They're going to get slaughtered, mm -hmm. period, uh, in a discussion. But I've been talking Republicans about Republicans in seven or six? I, I talk about it like it's an NBA, NBA series. Oh, yeah, no. So I say Republicans seven, 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 in seven, seven, seven or six. No, no, no. It's a complete wipeout. Like sweep. It's, it's over. Wow. <laughs> but again, this was the sweep that happened in 2010 mm -hmm. when I left the Democrat Party. Um, and a lot of folks just weren't paying attention. I say all the time, Trump was the best and worst thing to me that happened to black people because people started paying attention. Mm -hmm. I've been talking about this for years. A lot of people have, but I'm just saying my own personal story. I got the tapes to prove it. When I left the Democrat Party in 2010, it's because they f***ed up after 2008. You had the motivation. You had the movement. You had all of this energy, and you did nothing with it. Mm. So what Trump did, because he made it entertaining, he made it a reality show, folks started paying attention. And so after you saw Trump doing all of the stuff that, yes, was fascist, yes, an abuse of the Constitution, now people are saying, well, Joe Biden, why you? Why can't you do it? Mm -hmm. Why don't you get gangster like that? He even said, I believe, earlier this week or last week. Yeah, on Jimmy well, Kimmel. I, yeah, I don't want to abuse the Constitution that mm -hmm. way. Well, we want you to abuse the Constitution in that way. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you have to, or you should, you owe your voters uh, something for their vote. And the problem I tell people with this, and people say, oh, give him time, and he can't do this and do that, then why did you lie about it while you're running? That's mm. my main thing. Mm. Nobody asked you to volunteer a lie. Nobody. Mm. You know, I talk about it often, being in the family, uh, being in the room when he called George Floyd's family. Nobody in the family said, hey, can you pass legislation? You know, what are you going to do? He volunteered that lie. So when you run for office, like I always talk about pimps, politicians, and pastors have a very similar speech the mm -hmm. way they give me you us when you volunteer that lie and then you do not deliver and then you say well i can't do it well you knew that when you volunteered the lie that's right joe biden's been in office mm -hmm. for 40 plus years he knows he needs congress you know that so if you knew that why didn't you say that but the the pimp game is all about tapping into folks emotions making them believe in this hope that doesn't exist instead of being realistic. They still have not figured out that if you deal with somebody straight shot, no chase, if you give it to them real and say, you know what, I can't really do this, but I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. And you just and, and you mm -hmm. set the expectations realistic. People say, OK, that makes sense. It's the blatant, flat out lie. And Joe Biden, again, I'll give it down who don't like it. Joe Biden uh, used that year where emotions were very high mm -hmm. um, because of 2020, you know, with all of the protests going on everywhere because of COVID. And he used that as an opportunity to win because he's ran two times before that. And so my issue with that is just is really just the honesty, Charlamagne. It's mm -hmm. the volunteer life for me. Nothing's yeah. worse than a volunteer. So how do you tell people at this day and age? To go out and vote, right? Yeah. Because we, like, what do you tell yeah, them? Yeah, what do you tell them? Because I mean, you see what's happening. You see every time we go out there and vote, it seems like when they get in office, they change sides immediately. Well, my thing is, and Glaze brought that up. One of the things I'm here to talk about: text six six eight six six. Okay. Text push the line. What I have decided to do, what I've done for years, training hundreds of folks every year. This time we're going to do it in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, September 10th. Uh, the beautiful Cobb Center. Nobody has to pay a dime, not even for your lunch. I want to train about 300 people, candidates, operatives, and organizers in order to run your city. So to answer your question, I don't tell people who to vote for. I don't tell them what party to align themselves with. I am an independent. What I do is say, get in the game and do something. And so to me, that is on the local and the state level. The federal level, it is what it is. At the end of the day, the local and state really does matter. Your city commissioner, you know, your state rep, your state senator, not U.S., your mayor. You're talking about five or six people, typically in small cities, that make decisions. And so when you have influence there and you can show that, hey, I can organize a thousand people, I can get 500 people, you know, to, to uh, align with my message. That's where, you, you know, you're able to get more of a result. So to me, it's not about necessarily just voting. It's who you're voting for. Mm -hmm. And so I tell the homies all the time, if you don't like how they move it, then let's stop chasing them and replace them. Get in the game. Run for precinct chair. Run for dog catch. I don't give a damn what it is. Do something. And so as long as you're doing it, even if you're doing it to be a disruptor, everybody's mm -hmm. not going to win. The first session that I'm doing is teaching you 
how do you define your win? It can't just be about the win. It could be to disrupt. It could be to have a movement. It could be to get a message out. Whatever it is, I've worked with countless candidates who have won with nothing in their pocket, mm -hmm. felons, ar arrested multiple times because they got out there and hustled. Your hustle will beat uh, an incumbent if you out there doing what you should be doing. So that's what I'm about. I'm trying mm -hmm. to get people organized. F it. I'm tired of talking to people about, oh, we got to do this and do that. I'm tired of talking about the federal level. Let's talk about the state and the local. All right, we have more with Tesla and Figaro. When we come back, it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Tesla and Figaro. Charlemagne? So why should, you know, black people, young voters, like why should we be encouraged to vote in the midterms or, or, or even in 2024 like yeah uh, i talk about so we have voter suppression and mm -hmm. then we have voter depression and some people are just simply not encouraged to vote mm -hmm. i mean period they don't see the difference in their life but i encourage people though to talk to your city council person why mm -hmm. are they not making the difference in, in your life they're the ones that have access to be able to fund a lot of your nonprofits. They are the ones that have access to be able to keep the city clean, the potholes, uh, you know, keep uh, uh, regulations reasonable so that people can afford, you know, to live in their city. Mm -hmm. So when these city council people get off with not having to be accountable mm -hmm. because they're busy talking about Trump, when your state rep, not mm. your U.S. rep, mm. when your state rep is able to talk about these large issues like abortion or January 6th or all of these things that they know damn well they don't have any impact on and you're not asking them how come you didn't fund you know our football football program That's real. how come you didn't fund our basketball program when you're not getting down to your actual local uh, representative you're not seeing a difference and they're getting by uh, with basically scamming you in my opinion not everybody I, I work with a lot of great candidates but we have to really start teaching people that it's not about the federal level it really is about the local and the state and the federal should be pointing to the local and the state to say hey they end the qualified immunity in new york city how come we can't end it in oklahoma hey mm -hmm. they ended qualified immunity in colorado how come we can't end it in missouri so when you hear people saying oh we can't end qualified immunity Oh, the police union. Do New York City not have a police union? Yeah. Does Colorado not have a police union? If Sylvester uh, Mayor Tur Turner in uh, Houston was able to end chokeholds, why can't, you know, another city end chokeholds? So there's a lot going on, you know, on the local level that I tell people to get involved. So I don't talk about getting about voting. I talk about getting the game. So, the vote, so voters should just be focused on hyper local. Basically, that's what I believe. All right. So, so yeah. if not, so we look at Biden and Kamala Harris. So, what yeah. what would you give their grading if you had to grade them? What what would their grade be <laughs> at this day and age? I'm gonna follow my brother Killer Mike. I think you said an F minus, so I don't even think an F minus <laughs> yeah. exists. Yeah, it's it's and why? Well, again, it's the volunteer lie. You know, it's not that I don't understand how this process works. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of folks come in the comment, you don't understand how it works, thinking they're giving me some new information. I understand how the process works. Mm -hmm. The problem is manipulating our people. Joe Biden is the only one that said, I owe you black people, literally. The only one. Mm -hmm. Barack Obama didn't even say that. Dang. So to turn around and, and in January or February, I believe, when he went with our leaders, who, who they call our leaders, and told them on tape, I'm not signing I'm not doing an executive order. I'm not doing. I mean, just put the pimp game down. I'm said I'm not doing. Where was that same energy that you had when you were running? Stop. You again. I hope people go back and listen to me on the Ghetto Boys podcast because I broke down pimps, politicians, and pastors. Me, you, us. It's the same speech. The same format. You can break it down here too. Okay, I can break it Why down not? here too. Okay, great. Pimps, politicians, pastors. Not everybody, mm -hmm. but I want you to follow the speech pattern. It's always me, you, us. So. The politician, if you listen to the speech, they start out with me. And they literally train folks how to do this. Hey, my name is Tesla Figaro. I'm from such and such. You know, I'm my age. I grew up in this city. Then they go with the you. Hey, DJ Envy, uh, you know, I know what you've been going through. I know your pain. I know that last night, using my example, last night you went to the hospital. And were you able to afford the health care? I know that really hurt. You and I have something in common. I had to go to the hospital before, too. You and I together, that's the us. You and I together can make a difference. All I need you to do is give me $5. And then let's move on and let's make a difference. If All I need you to do is elect me and give me $5. That's the politician. Then you get to the pimp. Me, you, us. What does the pimp do when he start out with me? How he dresses, how he looks. I'm looking good. I'm such and such. I'm pimp whoever. Mm -hmm. I got this. I look good. Look at my car. Look at what I have. Mm -hmm. Then he goes 
and talks to the woman. You, look at you. You ain't doing so good, baby. How he treating you? Not treating you right? You giving that up and you ain't getting nothing for it? How you, you know, how you moving? How you living? Mm -hmm. Me and you together can make a difference. All I need you to do is go out on that track and give me your $25. <laughs> <laughs> me and you together can change the world. Is that not what the pimp do? That's right. Is that not what the politician do? That's now right. let's get to the pastor. Now again, there's some good pastors out there, but this is the speech, me, you, us. Mm -hmm. I'm a man of God. I'm a man, I'm a woman of God. The Lord sent me. You know how they talk about, oh, mm -hmm. in the church, the blessings come down from me. Mm -hmm. To me, it flows right on to you. And then in the church, they'll say, I know I'm talking to somebody. Am I, am I talking to somebody in here? Mm -hmm. I know somebody in here understand. If you ever been to church where you sit and say, damn, seems like right. you're talking to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the you. Yeah. The me, you, us. Mm -hmm. And some of it is definitely anointing. Some because I'm a bootleg preacher myself, mm -hmm. but it's still the same speech for, format. Me, you, us. Have you feeling guilty? Have you feeling some type of way? All I need you to do is come down and pay this offering. Pay your tithes and pay your offering. Because <laughs> me and you together, too, will touch and agree. Me and you together, mm -hmm. we're going to get blessings. Is that not me, you, us? Mm -hmm. It's the same speech format. Literally. And so that has been used to manipulate even in the black church, what gets more money than anything else. The, st the strongest pack out there right now uh, is a Jewish pack. We have no pack, political action committee, for those who don't know, that for black people that is as strong as the current packs that are out there now for other communities. All the money goes to the black church. Those are just facts. So when we're not using, when, when those, uh, when that speech is used to manipulate in the church, politicians, you remember when Cory Booker ran? And he was talking about, oh, yeah, I know what it's like. Remember during mm -hmm, the debate? Mm -hmm. I know what it's like. People shoot up, and I, I, I've got plenty of friends. Remember, he was homie this and homie that. Mm -hmm. No disrespect to you, Corey. But he was homie this. I'm from Jersey. Was that the same Corey Booker that was giving a speech about defund the police? Mm. How saying we don't need to defund the police? Mm. So you flipped the game. You, you did the pimp game, the politician game, to identify with me. But then when it came time to deliver... You pimp slap me like a pimp, literally. That's right. So it's the same format. And so we have to understand that and recognize it and don't get mad at the game. Just understand it and know how to know how to play in it. Mm. And so people get upset. So they get depressed and they say, F it, I don't want to do it. No, no, no. I'm trying to teach you how to play the game. Play the game exactly like they play in the game and, just, you know, start using that. For so how do we stop being hoes? <laughs> how do we stop being hoes? I don't know. I think a hoe is always a hoe. Damn. She's always going to have sex. One way or the other. The question is, is she going to get what something you gonna out get of from, it? Bro. That's right. Be the best hoe you can be. Where's the camera looking at? Be the best hoe you can be. You going to hold, hold. Hold that thing out. I'm, I'm, hey, I'm right. Yesterday's price ain't today's price. Yeah. So is Biden a one-term president then? Yes. I believe so. I believe he knows that. I mean, even if he had said, you know, originally that he probably wouldn't run the second time, mm -hmm. that his whole thing was about uh, healing America. You can't heal the hearts of man. Only God can That's do right. that. Mm -hmm. We want actual results. So, yeah. Right. And make sure y'all subscribe to the Straight Shot yes. No Chaser podcast mm -hmm. on the Black Effect iHeartRadio podcast network. That's Teslin's podcast if you want to hear more of this uh, this real <laughs> shit, okay, on a weekly basis. All right. Well, it's The Breakfast Club. It's Tez. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. And shout out to all the cyclists out there. Anybody out there on their bikes that's working out? I'm going to get back on my bike this oh, week. Oh, you back? And I'm going to start doing, I think I'm going to start doing bike life. weekly rides from the uh, our juice bar in Brooklyn. So I'll give you guys some updates if you want to ride with us. We're going to ride. It's nothing crazy. We ain't going to be doing 15, 16 miles an hour. It's going to be a nice ride to get our cardio back, to get us in shape. So we'll start at the juice bar, get some juices which is uh, Juices for Life, and then we'll, we'll ride. We'll do about 20, 30 miles, and then we'll come right back and, and you know, keep it healthy. I told myself I'm going to start that uh, this 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 month. Um, you didn't want to put a real date on it. No, nah, I won't put a real date on it. This yeah, month. I was going to be, yeah. Nah, I'm gonna put a, <laughs> this month, all right? Okay. All right. Well, let's get, let's get to the rumors. Let's talk Roddy Rich. It's time, time, time. She's spilling the tea. This is the Rumor Report with Angela Yee oh. on The Breakfast Club. All right, Roddy Rich was arrested on gun charges. He was on his way to the governor's ball where he was supposed to perform on Saturday. That's in New York City. Mm -hmm. And so he had to cancel his performance. Now, an official Sunday confirmed that the charges were dropped against him, by the way. And so a law enforcement insider said that officers at the festival security checkpoint claims they discovered a loaded firearm in his vehicle. 
And so because these were all dropped, clearly it wasn't his, right? Yeah, which which makes sense. I mean, he's from L.A. He's in town to perform. It was him, his driver that he hired, and security that he hired. The security is from Brooklyn, so it hired. So if there's a gun in the car, whose gun do you think it would be? Yeah, he and two other people in the automobile were placed under arrest. They said initially he was facing four charges. Possession of a large capacity ammunition feeding device, unlawful possession thereof, as well as criminal possession of a weapon. But those charges have been dropped. Yes, I would be pissed to F off, too. I'm coming to show. He's probably, probably making one hundred $200,000 performing. And now I can't do my show because y'all arrest me and say it's my gun where, where I hired security to make sure I'm safe in New York when New York is crazy right now. And you re- arrest me and I miss my show. Yeah, that's fair. I'll be pissed off, too. Right. So and then imagine all the fans who were looking forward to seeing Absolutely. him. Absolutely. All right. Now, Monique's sister has gone on Facebook and done a post about Monique and her name is Millicent I'm she said enough is enough my sister stop the madness it's not a good look God has shut you down before and believe me he will do it again let's start by staying on topic you are and have been displacing your anger on the wrong people why don't you start sister with you and that begins with one digging deep and praying Mm. and she's uh, she also told Monique take heed and clean your house up because it's dirty sis you're coming with the same story over and over again if nothing changes nothing changes your career has been dead in the past and now it's about to come to life and now you are killing it again and now the plug is about to be pulled on you and you are about to be cancelled again this time it's flatline I just can't take no more text messages or phone calls at one time the stage and the world was your oyster what you're doing now is offensive to this family our parents and your siblings but all of a sudden it's about you having to be right good bad or indifferent and now you are wrong as two left shoes and then she also said although you did not show up to your father's or your mother's funeral service I'm sure they forgive you because they know who their child used to be so she also ended Damn, it by messy. saying, this is all coming from a place of love. Sister, stop. Your biological sister, Millicent, love you to life and will be here for you always. That's messy. I wonder why, you know, as, as family members, you just don't pick up the phone and say, you know what, I'm going to say this to you to your face. Yeah, I don't know what type of things Maybe are going Maybe don't speak on. to each other no more. Maybe don't have each other's numbers, but damn, this is messy. All right, now Queen Latifah recently sat down on Hot Ones and they showed a throwback photo of her and Tupac and she talked about some of her fondest moments of their friendship. Here's what she had to say about Tupac hanging out with her in a gay club. We toured together, so we went all across the country, um, San Francisco doing a a show, my first show over $10,000, like which was a New Year's Eve show um, at this cool gay club in San Francisco. I was like, yo, I'm here. He was like, yo, I'm gonna hook up with you. So Tupac came to the club with me and I was like, yo, come on, Tupac is in the building. They went crazy in there. (laughs) I was like, they gonna tear you out your clothes, come here. He's like, man, he took his shirt off anyway. (laughs) We had so much fun. You know, but that was like my brother and he would like, he's the type of person I would like, if he loved you, if he was cool with you, he'd lay his life down for you. So I miss him and I love him. That's dope. All right. Now, Mike Tyson also had some good Tupac stories and he was talking about uh, basically, you know, meeting Tupac. Here's what he had to say. Mike Tyson on meeting Tupac. Tupac was one of those guys that we went to let them in in the back and some kind of way they even got on the stage, took the mic, they started rapping and I met Tupac. Six months later I'm in prison and I get a call from somebody, it's Tupac's mother and he explains, um, she know me from her son, explained I let him in a club one night and he wants to come and visit me. I said, great, okay. And then I, he came in to visit me and um, they let him in and he came to the visiting room. As soon as he came up, everybody started. So they already knew who was. They already knew who was. No, no, no. What's going on, They respected him. That's dope. (laughs) Yeah, that, I mean, Tupac sounded like the realest person for real. Absolutely. So that was on Drink Champs with Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. And by the way, there's a teaser out now for the new Hulu biographical series on Mike Tyson. Trevante Rhodes is starring as Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. So that upcoming limited series, Mike, is based on his life, and it launches on Hulu on August 25th, just the FYI. I would would love to. I mean, that's one of the interviews that I would love to do. I would love to interview Mike Tyson. I I bumped into him a couple of times, like literally, like in a club. Not literally bumped. No, like like bumped into him by accident. And then I turn around like you're like, who the hell is this bumping into me? And then you turn around, you realize it's Mike Tyson and then you run because you just don't want that problem. Come on. It's an accident. You just say sorry. It was Mike Tyson a you long ran? time ago. Yes, I ran. You know how weird that is? You know how many times you people, bumped Mike Tyson into him and people ran? out in the club in New York City club? This is before you sued. You just got knocked out and you you woke up in the hospital. 
And I didn't want to wake up in a hospital. It's a good story, though, for the radio. It is. All right. Now, J. Cole has le- stepped away from the Scarborough shooting stars to fulfill touring obligations. There's no word on whether he'll return or not. Mm-hmm. But he did play four games. So, you know, there you have it. I saw a lot of people going out to the game to support J. Cole. Yeah, shout out to J. Cole. Hold on. Before you end, I got one last story. Mm-hmm. All right. Del Curry. That's Steph Curry's uh, dad. His new girlfriend. You see this whole story? No. Okay, so his new girlfriend used to be married to Steph Curry's mother, Sonia Curry's new man. You get it? Yes. So his mom is dating a guy, and now his dad is dating that guy's ex-wife. ex-wife. Is that crazy? That's weird. <laughs> All right, keep it in the family. And that is your rumor report. That is very weird. All right, the People's Choice Mix is up next. We've been teasing this all last week when Envy was not here. <laughs> Get your request in. It's The Breakfast Club. You Good know morning. how it works. <laughs> the Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Angela Yee here. The General Insurance is a quality insurance company that's been saving people money for nearly 60 years. Switch to The General and you could save over $500. Call 800-GENERAL or visit thegeneral.com. The General Auto Insurance Services, Inc., an insurance agency, Nashville, Tennessee. Some restrictions apply. And I lost, and I lost. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest, some special guests in the building. Yes, indeed. We have Brandon Victor Dixon. And we have, I'm going to mess your name up, brother. <laughs> Arumo Say Akimi. Arumo Say Akimi, okay. Well, good morning. Good morning. What's going on, y'all? Man, this is a beautiful time, man, because, you know, you have the political thriller 88, you know, which premieres at the Tribeca Film Festival this weekend. Yes. So tell people what that's about. Well, first and foremost, executive produced by yourself. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, but, uh, I mean, you, uh, I'm grateful. You you brought me on here not too long ago to kind of talk about the fact that we were trying to get the film made, mm-hmm. and now it is made, and it's premiering at Tribeca, and, and I, I got to come back now with the writer-director, Eramo Say. So why don't you break the film down for everybody? 88 is about a Nigerian-American uh, super PAC director. He's the financial director of a super PAC. And uh, he comes on upon anomalies in the donations um, that are coming into the super PAC. And the movie is basically a conspiracy thriller where he starts investigating the source of the money, which uncovers a mass conspiracy going back hundreds and thousands of years. Always follow the money. Yeah, mm-hmm. always follow the money. It had a... Uh has a spook spook by the door element to it to me was that was that any inspiration you ever seen spook by the door i did you know okay. i did i did yeah i mean to be honest like so what i always tell people with me is like i'm so i'm nigerian but grew up in lagos and london and my father was a movie collector so we had thousands of movies on videotape so if you remember beta max and vhs and all that stuff mm-hmm. so i used to watch movies every day mm-hmm. And a lot of the older movies that we saw, like the classics, a lot of them were conspiracy thrillers. So, you know, you're talking Manchurian Candidate, the original, That's right. mm-hmm. Marathon Man, um, Parallax View, and all those sorts of films. All the President's Men is another one. So those were the films, you know, inspiration-wise, that really sort of formed the foundation for the movie, for mm-hmm. me. Um, but another crazy thing is, like, I always thought, as black people... It's crazy we've never had like a heightened political, thri- like conspiracy thriller, mm-hmm. even though we've had the most conspiracies perpetrated on <laughs> <black> <laughs> people. That's right. We don't have a conspiracy thriller. So I, that was like a real thing for me. I was like, because you know we what? know what will happen. We know yeah. what will happen. Yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, that was a thing. I was like, you know what? Let me go out and make something that is really sort of cerebral and really talking about a lot of things under the surface in terms of race, economics, power, and so forth. But put black faces and people of color at the helm, you know, of the story. Yeah, the reason I, you know, I even wanted to be involved when I heard Brandon talking about it is because the reason I think this, the timing is right for this movie is because I feel like black people have gotten more sophisticated in regards to politics. I think uh, uh, black people are starting to to expand the 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 views in which we're looking at race and how it affects us uh, culturally and politically. So I, I, I definitely, I think I agree with you right there. I think our perspective is, is expanding and we're starting to recognize that it's impacting us in a lot of different ways on right. a lot of different levels and arenas. And so a film like this, particularly, I think in the way that, that, you know, Thomas put it, uh, Ramos say put it together, uh, really begins to unpack those different layers, I think, in a really effective way. And, and I think so since more. President, o- and I think since President Obama, politics has become pop culture. It's pop culture. Yeah. 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 With social media and as, as well, it's, it's crazy. 
the premise, like super PACs, I didn't know anything about super PACs, mm-hmm. okay? A super PAC is a political action committee, the idea being there are laws and rules as far as campaigning mm-hmm. funds, so how much money you can actually put into a campaign officially. So if you have a candidate like Obama or Biden or whatever, there's a limit on how much they can raise from campaigns. So what they've done is a, a super PAC is essentially an entity that raises money to campaign for a candidate separate from the candidate. And their limit is unlimited. So they can raise $2 billion to campaign for a candidate as long as they're not officially connected. Yeah, as an individual, so, I'm capped at 2500 Exactly. So you can have a super PAC who's raising tens of billions of tens of millions of dollars to put into a campaign and they're running. So basically a lot of the ads that you see come from a super PAC and they're not actually officially connected to the campaign or the candidate involved. And this is the way that. And they're not allowed to coordinate with the candidate directly. Right. But they almost always have some level of coordination. Right. And I think the main thing and where, you know, when you're talking about the movie is where's all that money coming from? Mm -hmm. And I think the thing is, as communities, if we're talking about the black community, is once you really understand how to utilize that. So, for example, if somebody wants to get somebody elected but doesn't want to put their name down as in, I gave $20 million to this candidate, you can do that through a super PAC, Mm -hmm. you know? So if you want to actually affect policy change, get involved in understanding how super PACs work, how nonprofits work, how Mm -hmm. they're connected. And you can actually get real support and get get people elected that way you know and then so, that that, I, so really that's the only way to really get elected when you run in for president is to have a bunch of super PACs of people that are really pushing for you that is not quote unquote you now yeah now <laughs> now that is the game i mean now it's 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 crazy i mean you know we're talking i think it was like 900 million i can't remember what it was as of a few years ago that that had been raised since citizens united in 2010 got passed and that was the the legislation that really changed everything. I mean, at that point, you could actually put money in a non-profit. They can just repackage the money, send it on to a super PAC. And because they don't have to report to the FEC, you never know who put the money in. So it's crazy when we're talking about Russia and we're talking about the whole Russia scandal. That is this big in comparison to this, because this is real money laundering so Russia could have gave 100 million dollars easily to somebody to help without you knowing right correct Which without you wow and there's no regulations laws or anything against it it's funny that the law made it possible there are regulations and laws against it but there are also regulations and laws that create loopholes in order to make it possible right so on the right. surface you can say you you there are structures in place but everybody who knows how to manipulate them can't and i think that issue of you know you don't know where this money's coming from really matters and is really significant in the film, both in terms of, a lot of times we think about that just in terms of uh, self-interest, personal self-interest of, of you know, uh, wealthy individuals, the 1%, but it's not just about uh, personal self-interest. I think you have to expand uh, uh, the, the purview of what that means. It's what are the what are the ideals by which this person or this group of mm-hmm. people or this corporation lives and how do they want that money to how do they want that money to affect the the politicians that they are investing in? Which is scary because, you know, you look at it and you, you think America's uh, democratic, right, where we, we vote for the president, but we really don't. Right. Because if you have a, a, a something, let's say Russia, let's say Russia wants Donald Trump in. Right. Mm-hmm. Russia can put as much money on the floor to make sure Donald Trump is because they might have something else that they want from Donald Trump on the back end. Say Saudi Arabia wants Bush in. Mm-hmm. Say you know, but that that's the whole point. Then just to be like, scary. okay, well, who, what's coming from where? And I think the thing really becomes the, the thing that I think is great about the movie is that it, it 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 attacks it from both ends. But you start to look at what's happening in, in our in our society. What are the challenges that we as a collective feel we want to face, and why are we unable to overcome these challenges over and over again? Even when certain politicians will will pay lip service to the things that we support, even when the majority of their constituents seem to want a thing, why can't we get over that hump? And uh, this film tries to tackle those ideas. June 14th and June 18th, you can buy tickets to go see 88 at the Tribeca Film Festival. And it's also online. If you can't make it to the festival, you can get the online screenings from the 13th. So June you can 13th. watch it at home. Yep. Well, thank you. I, 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 I want to ask mm-hmm. one more question. What yeah, does yeah. the Tribeca Film Festival mean for a film? Oh, wow. I mean, look, it's been great for me personally. You know, this is the third time I've been there. I've been there with two features now and one short film. Uh, film festival is essentially just a, a way for getting a movie out and launching your mm-hmm. film. Mm-hmm. So for me, without Tribeca, like we wouldn't even be talking about 88 right now. Mm-hmm. You know, right. people wouldn't really know about the movie. And I think that's the most important thing that this is doing for stories like this and filmmakers like us 
who do not have millions of dollars to spend on advertising, who do not have the outreach that you know a studio film would have, is these guys do that work for you and just give you a platform. And then if your movie resonates with an audience, you know, yeah. from there, you know, you can sort of launch a launch a film. So that's what it means for for me and the and the movie. Build a profile for the film and also connect with other artists who are mm -hmm. working in, in in the same capacity. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, thank you, brothers. Definitely go out and support, and we appreciate you guys. I'm gonna check it out this weekend. That's thank right. You. Appreciate y'all having us. Thank All you right. so much. All right. Now, uh, don't forget my car show less than six days away, Houston, Texas. If you haven't got your tickets, get your tickets. Family fun. Uh, your favorite celebrity cars, old school cars, slabs, new cars, and all that. And then uh, Atlanta, July 9th. So if you can't make it to Houston, Atlanta is going to be just as crazy. So can't wait to see you guys. Now, yeah, you got a positive note? Yes, and this positive note is about... Uh Paying attention to who is around you. Pay attention to whom your energy increases and decreases around. That's the universe giving you a hint on who you should stray from or stay around. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?